Okay. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson, the personal finance show focused on moving you forward financially. On today's show, we're focusing on the retirement readiness of Canadians. What does your retirement dream look like? If you're thinking you will never be able to retire, if you're considering delaying your retirement, or if you're thinking you will barely have enough to get by when you do, you're not alone. That is the finding of a recent survey released by the Financial Services Regulatory of Ontario. And we're gonna discuss these findings of the survey today and the concerns that many retirees, near retirees and future retirees are experiencing right now. And we're also gonna have some really good advice for you so you can be confident about your golden years. Joining me to talk about that today, we have Andrew Funk, Acting Executive Vice President of Pensions with the Financial Services Regulatory of Ontario. Andrew, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Shannon. Before we get into our discussion, can you share a little bit about uh, FSRA and what your role is there? Sure. So the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario, FISRA for short, is a consumer protection agency. We protect Ontarians during some of the most important financial transactions of their lives. So for example, getting a mortgage, working with a financial planner or financial advisor, or buying life and health insurance. We are also Ontario's uh, pension regulator. That's where I come in. Uh, FISRA regulates all employer-sponsored pension plans registered in Ontario. I'm the, as you said, acting EVP of pensions. My team works to promote good administration of pension plans and to protect and safeguard the pension benefits and rights of pension plan beneficiaries. We are in fact the largest pension regulator in Canada. Here in Ontario, we have over 4,000 registered pension plans uh, with assets totaling uh, over 800 billion and covering um, uh, five, uh, four and a half million members and beneficiaries. As to myself, uh, I'm an actuary by training, and I've been in the industry for over 35 years. I started off as a pension consulting actuary, um, helping organizations that sponsors pension plan uh, assess their funding needs and compliance with regulations. Uh, I did that for over 20 years. Then I moved to manage a very large public sector pension plans for about 10 years from the perspective of funding risk, pension plan, uh, policy development, strategy, member communications, et cetera. But I have never been a regulator, and so when the opportunity arose about six years ago, I joined FISRA, uh, hoping to leverage my years of consulting and boots on the ground plan management experience to influence and promote a more vibrant and healthy pension environment. Well, you definitely have all the experience, and that's really great. So I want to get into sort of the findings of this survey. It was conducted by Forum Research, and it was com commissioned by your organization, FISRA, and um, some of the results from this survey are, are quite surprising. Now, the, the good part is that this is specifically geared towards Ontario. Like you say, you're, a, you're an Ontario regulator. And so this is really relevant to our viewers, obviously, in, in this particular area. So one of the statistics says that one in five Ontarians believe they will never be able to retire. That's 20%. And that's a, that to me is a huge number. And only 17% believe their quality of life will be better when they retire. Just over a third of, um, of uh, poll respondents said or about 39% expected their quality of life will be the same. And 43% believe they will be worse off in their retirement years. Now, I want to point out that this last statistic is reflective, but there was another survey done, uh, and it was released by the National Institute on Aging, which tracks retirement readiness among those who are 50 years old or older. And if, from that survey, only about a third of those over 50 years old uh, who plan to retire say they are financially prepared to do so. 
39% say they did not feel financially ready to retire, and 26% are unsure if they can afford to retire when it actually happens. So, Andrew, these are concerning numbers. What are What's your reaction to these? So both surveys show similar results, and our research has found that people are actually might actually be falling behind on their retirement savings. I am definitely concerned and worried, to say the least. I've been working in pensions for over 35 years, and I've dedicated my career to financial security at retirement. This is what I have lived and breathed for many years, and I want people to know uh, about the importance of saving and planning ahead. That's what Pension Awareness Day is all about for me. So Pension Awareness Day is one of our major events that every year at FISRA, it happens on the third Thursday of every February, and this year it falls on February 15th. And the goal is to promote the awareness of pensions and to encourage, in particular, young workers to start thinking about and saving for retirement. This is something that I'm extremely passionate about. I, I remember getting my first job in pensions. I was in my early 20s. Uh, retirement seemed so far away and uh, almost 40 years later, boom, is right uh, before you. So for some, reason, for some reason, people don't really think about saving for retirement. It's not that we cannot save. I have two adult children. Uh, they were saving for years to buy their first homes. We save for cars and vacations, and we have plans to pay down our debt. Uh, these are all really important things you should save for them. Paying bills and mortgage payments are necessities for today, but retirement is a necessity for tomorrow. And it is probably going to be a more expensive, if not the most expensive life events that one has to face. And we should also be saving for that as well. Uh, this is only going to be more important as people live longer and potentially uh, spending um, many, many more uh, active years in their retirement lives. You mentioned there that you have over 30 years of experience in the industry. Um, with these statistics, have you seen a trend in the last few years or maybe even decades? Have you seen a trend of more and more people being unprepared for retirement? Is, is that shifting in that direction, unfortunately? Um, so uh, I don't have that trend per se, but my um, impression is that that trend has been quite steady. As I mentioned, savings for retirement has always been a challenge. But I think the current inflationary, inflationary environment exacerbates that situation a little bit. Yeah, and I was just sort of wondering what your what your sort of thoughts were, just because you've been you've been in the industry for so long. Um, now, your survey also shows that more than half of Ontarians, about 56%, they don't know how much money they will need to retire comfortably. And about 20, 27%, I should say, have not developed a plan to ensure they have enough money for retirement. Now, we often hear conversations about a, a dollar amount that you need in order to retire. But I think it's important to, to think about my retirement is going to look different than yours, which is going to look different than my neighbors. Um, what is your advice for, for those to help them to ensure that they've got the necessary funds for retirement? So that's a very difficult question to answer, and I wish I have uh, that crystal ball. Um, you are absolutely correct. What is the right number for one person is going to be very different from another person. It really depends on what your goals are. I would start there. Uh, if you are, are someone who has paid off the mortgage and plans to stay close to home and doesn't have uh, any children, your answer is going to be very different from a person who wants to travel or someone who wants to leave something behind for their children and, or grandchildren. Um, so ask yourself what it is that you want to do in retirement, and then you can start to make your calculations. If you need to, work with a qualified financial planner um, to help you determine what you should uh, be aiming for. That would be my advice. Is uh, and, and from what you're saying, it's sounding mm -hmm. like there is there some kind of a magic formula to to look at to, in order to set mm -hmm. once we've made those goals. Mm -hmm. um, is there a formula that we can use? So generally speaking, people will aim to have a fraction, say 70% of their pre-retirement income to be able to maintain similar pre-retirement lifestyle. Uh, that's income from all sources. So for example, your CPP, your OAS, uh, your employer-sponsored pension payments, your other savings such as RSP and TFSA and any kind of ongoing 
um, income, for example, investment and insurance income that you might expect to have during retirement years. The reason is that you might not need to replace 100% of your pre-retirement income is because during retirement, many of the employment-related expenses could be spared. Again, this is only a general guideline. Everyone's situation is different. Um, so, uh, for example, I said people living longer and will likely maintain a more active retirement lifestyle. Uh, if you want to travel more and if that's the case, you might need a little bit more. Uh, and there are also examples on the flip side where uh, one does not need as much. So people might choose to move from, let's just say, a larger uh, metropolitan where cost of living is generally higher uh, to a smaller town where cost of living is generally lower uh, for quite a life. And, and if you own a home, you, you can tap into the equity built up in that home as additional source of income as well, too. So <clears throat> for those who are sort of nearing those retirement years, do you have any advice on when we should be considering our retirement? So like the timing of it? Mm -hmm. So I told you at the beginning, I'm an actuary by training. And if you have ever worked with an actuary, you know that it is hard to get a definitive answer. So instead, you'll get a range of possibilities. Uh, the truth of that is that you don't, you won't know until you get close to close to the date. Um, so when you're young, retirement seems far away and you don't know what your retirement goals are going to be. And even if you do, these goals and aspirations will often change as time goes on. So you will likely have a better idea as you age and as your personal situation changes. However, that does not mean that people should not be starting to think and save for retirement until later. The key is to start young and ask, uh, and the task will be less daunting when compared with starting late. Um, it might be too late. Uh, you know, as our survey indicated, 20% of the people think they will never be able to retire. Um, you, you definitely don't want to end up in that situation. But monetary uh, consideration aside, it will also depend on other factors such as your health, desire to stay mentally and socially connected with your work community. Uh, people are living longer, healthier, and the desire to remain actively employed is becoming uh, more prominent. Also remember, the concept of retirement is changing too. Unlike before, when retirement is a discrete change in status at a particular point in time, it is becoming more and more of a transient state. You know? That is, people could be in a continuous state of retiring. Um, they might be reducing their work hours and work part-time with the current employer or seeking other part-time opportunities elsewhere to maintain a balance of um, remaining actively engaged while also allowing time to enjoy life. So this is something perhaps people sh could explore with the current employer if they are at that stage uh, or frame in mind. I like that you said that um... You know, setting those goals, first of all, is is really important um, because, like you say, part of this, we don't have a crystal ball. You know, we don't know when the right time yet is going to be retire to to retire. Um, we might have sort of an age in mind uh, for that to be our goal. And I think it's OK to set that goal now to for work sure. towards it. But like you say, it could be a transient uh transition into retirement it, it, or it could be a you know a final stop and so there's lots of different things that can happen in that time um, sure. so I appreciate that that you mentioned that that that's really good now just really quickly we've only got a a, a few seconds here but um your survey says that there was 61 percent of Ontarians know more about their favorite TV show than about their pension plans and we're going to get into this really in our second segment um, so maybe we should wait to to sort of hang on to that because obviously the survey is showing that um, many of us are unaware of the benefits of our pension plans if we have them through our employer um, and of course the vast majority of us do need an education on how those pension plans work and how we can take advantage of those and so we're going to get into that over uh, in our next segment uh, when money matters return this program is brought to you by ignite tv now you're in command Visit rogers.com for more details. Today, I help the senior find transportation to an important medical appointment. Today, I helped a new mom find virtual programming so she didn't feel so isolated. Today, I helped someone understand new government supports. 
Every day, 211 navigators connect Canadians to critical government and community programs and services. 211. Help starts here. Public transit, garbage pickup, parks and recreation programs, snow removal on your street. How can you stay informed about these and other important local services? Tune to City Council coverage on Rogers TV. See your community leaders at work on Rogers TV City Council coverage. Welcome back to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson. My guest today is Andrew Fong, Acting Executive Vice President of Pensions with the Financial Services Regulatory of Ontario. And today we're focusing on retirement readiness. According to a recent FSRA survey, there are many Ontarians concerned with about when they can retire and what their retirement will look like. Many worry their retirement dream will never become a reality, or when it does, those golden years may be anything but. So, Andrew, we talked about some red flags in the poll in the first segment, but there's been some positive findings as well, and they focus on the need to educate people more regarding retirement planning, as well as the importance of starting early. So we're going to talk about that a little bit because your survey shows that 91% of people agree that more should be done to educate people about pensions. So what are your recommendations on how this can be done? So uh, indeed, and we know that pensions and savings for retirement can be a complex topic uh, as you're dealing with many unknowns and we explored uh, some of these uncertainties before the break. Uh, really, the you know to to get educated and to be educated, uh, or to educate is really the responsibilities of both the employees as well as the employers. Um, that's exactly the goal of our Pension Awareness Day, which is to promote that awareness of pensions and to encourage in particular young workers to start saving for retirement. We want to encourage people with pensions to learn more about their pensions uh, or any retirement saving vehicles that they might have access to and how they fit you know, uh, with their retirement goals. We also want to encourage people who are just starting a job to ask the employer if they offer a pension plan or retirement saving vehicles. Many um, pension plans and pension service providers are partnering with us to create that awareness on Pension Awareness Day by hosting various events like podcasts and education sessions about the value of pension plans. Um, at Fisra, we are also walking the talk uh, by inviting our pension administrators to speak to our employees about the value of the pension benefits. So FISRA website also contains a lot of information about pension plans. So you can visit us at www.fsrao.ca slash pension awareness to learn more about pension plans and their benefits. So building awareness it is, in, in my view, a first step towards education. And our goal is to breach any information gap that there might be uh, about pensions. Of course, we know many years ago, planning for retirement was a little easier than it is today. You know, you were hired, your companies offered a pension plan that you paid into, but unfortunately that isn't as common uh, today. According to the latest data from Statistics Canada, the pension coverage rate or the proportion of all paid workers covered by a registered pension plan was only 38% in 2021. So obviously that number is already three years old. So mm -hmm. it was 38% in 2021, which was down from 39.7 in 2020. And of course, that's a lot of people that, yeah. um, or I should say that is not a lot of people that are covered by a company pension plan. So if you're watching this show and you do have a company pension plan, that is really great. But we want to make sure that you're going to be making the most of it because in recent years, several surveys show that Canadians are missing out on billions of dollars of potential retirement savings every year by not taking full advantage of those matching contributions from their employers. So, Andrew, why aren't employees taking advantage of these plans? Um, so uh, part of it is awareness, right, and knowledge about the pension plan. So consider yourself to be amongst the luckiest if you belong to a pe workplace pension plan. So I think as a starter, take time to read and understand all pensions rated material provided by your employer. So, for example, pension plan administrators are required to provide plan members with an annual benefit statement. So many plan members will simply put that aside or worse, discard them. Uh, employers might also have plain language booklet or info pages you know, on the company's site, internet site 
about the company's pension plan. So at a very minimum, you know, learn about uh, the type of pension plan that your company is offering you. Learn about how much additional pension uh, you have earned for each year of additional service. Learn how much you and your employer have been contributing to the plan and how that part of savings have grown over time. Some plans allow you to select from a menu of funds to invest in uh, to, sorry, to invest in. So again, take time to understand the risks and the fit of those funds uh, to your retirement goal and horizon. Uh, as you indicated, you know, sometimes employers will provide top up or even matching contributions for additional contributions that employees voluntarily contribute. So these are, to me, free money on the table that you should not be leaving on the table if you can afford it. Um, so learn about your pension plan. So if you if you have questions, uh, make sure you talk to your HR to get those uh, questions answered. Also, uh, we will also face with many life events along the way, and these events will have impact on your pension benefits. So learn about that. So for example, learn about the pension options that you are entitled to when you face with financial hardship, uh, when you leave employment, have a marriage separation, or take a leave of absence. Um, so again, you can find many of those information on our website at FISRA, uh, but you can also ask your HR representative too. But one thing also remember to keep records and stay connected with your empl employer should you leave employment and choose to leave behind pension benefits with the plan to draw on at a later date at retirement. Often people have, you know, since change address or contact information, and forgot to inform their previous employer. And as a result, the employer lost contact and unable to pay the pensions when they fall due. So unlike years ago, when people tend to stay with one employer for life until retirement, it is not uncommon uh, for people to now have six or seven different jobs before they retire. Sometimes people have forgotten that the first job that they had some 30 years ago, they might actually be entitled to a pension. So based on our latest estimate, we have around 200,000 plan members in Ontario that the pension plans are unable to locate or contact. And the value of these stranded money in the pension plans is worth north of $3 billion. So you don't want to be missing out on your hard-earned pensions. Again, from the employer's perspective, pension plans offer great value, uh, and they are superb talent attraction and retention too. Employees know exactly how many weeks of vacation that they get or exactly the salaries or exactly how much their health benefit plans pay for their glasses or a massage, but they don't know the value of their pension plans. So um, I, I encourage employers who sponsor a workplace pension to do more to engage with employees to educate them on its immense value. Together with health and dental benefits and vacation, Pensions is the critical part of the total compensation to employees. All of that is really good information. Let's shift now to perhaps the people that don't mm -hmm. have that company pension. What advice do you have for those viewers that might be watching? So while it is true that the number of registered pension plans have been on the decline and not everyone has a company pension plan, however, Many employers do offer other forms of retirement saving vehicles, such as Group RSP or TFSA. So like those who belong to a pension plan, take time to learn about these other retirement savings options uh, from your employer and don't leave free money on the table. The same principle applies. These group offerings from your employer could provide better um, management oversight and fee advantage over what one might be able to get on their own through a retail outlet. Um, our survey indicates that 27% of the people actually have not developed a plan to ensure they have enough money for retirement. So it's never too late to start planning. Consider working with, a, again, I mentioned before, a qualified financial advisor to develop the goal uh, and saving plan to achieve that goals and stick to it. Well, that sort of leads me into this next question because mm -hmm. your their survey sold or, or mentioned that the majority of people, about 60% of people agreed that the right age to start thinking about or planning for retirement was actually in your 20s. And of course, you know, I remember being in my 20s and I wasn't thinking about retirement at the time. But what are some of the advantages to making that plan so early? So um, I have two adult children. Um, that's 
And that's exactly what I always told them again, again, growing up, start early, start saving. Uh, I made sure that the importance of saving was part of the DNA. Uh, I don't know how much they enjoyed it uh, because not everyone is a big pension geek like me, but uh, they never protested those conversations around the dinner table. Um, I, 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 my advice is just stock it away and no matter how much it is uh, and forget about it, out of sight, out of mind and let compound interest rate works for them. That's the, the advice that I would give to everyone. You know, I don't want my boys to fall behind and I don't want Ontarians to fall behind too. So, I'm a math geek and I've done some little math. So let's say you buy a fancy cup of coffee or a bubble tea every day. If you're able to cut down a cup every day and save that six or seven dollars and invest it over a span of 35 years, you will have over $150,000 at the end of the day. So small numbers work. Saving for retirement does seem daunting, but it doesn't have to be, especially if you start early. Have a plan, stick to it. That's half the battle won. Um, and also, if you're young people out there looking for a job, sometimes people focus squarely on salaries and vacation days. Be sure to ask if the company offers any pension plans or retirement savings vehicle. Uh, again, that should be part of the total compensation consideration that's often overlooked. Now, what about those people that may be starting this planning a little bit later? Maybe they're in their 40s or 50s and, and a little bit closer to that retirement age. Do you have any advice for those? Ken, is it possible to sort of make up for lost time? Um, so it's never too late uh, to have a plan and stick to it. Um, I guess making retirement savings part of your DNA and be, as I mentioned be, before, be a little bit more deliberate in making that retirement savings as part of your your day-to-day -day financial decision and choices. Um, so people make budgets for a car, make budgets you know, every day about vacations, mortgage payment, grocery bill. Make sure you make retirement savings be part of that budget. And as long as you have a plan and stick to it, uh, things will come through. I appreciate all the information that you've given us today. Do you have any final thoughts for, for our viewers? So a few things. Again, I want to repeat, retirement savings is important. It's probably the most expensive life event in life. Uh, the best time is to start was yesterday, but today works too. Uh, it doesn't have to be daunting. Explore your options, make a plan and stick to it. And it is my hope that from this day onward, every day is a pension awareness day. I agree with you. I think it's really important that no matter where you are in life, um, setting that plan in place is really important. Like you say, it's not always fun. You're not going to maybe get that instant gratification from it. But if you always keep that final goal in mind and you'll watch your investments or however you're, you make your plan, you will watch that grow as you move towards those retirement years. And, and that really is the motivation that we, we need to just keep going. And so, well Andrew, said. for for those who want to connect with you and learn more, to, more about FISRA, how can they do that? Yeah, so go to our website at www.fsrao.ca slash pension awareness. You'll find a wealth of information there. Again, I really appreciate you being here and taking the time to provide your advice to our viewers and to you, our viewers, for watching. Until next time, I'm Shannon Jackson. Thank you for having me. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Today, I...